Tim, first day, what do you take away from today's training session? Yeah, it's good. You know, a lot of a lot of guys have um, good energy, positive energy today. And that's kind of what you look for and you're excited about the first day. So um, it was good to see everyone out there getting touches on the ball and just getting a, getting a little rhythm going before we start really kicking on. Your new faces, uh, kind of the first day of school. What was it like for you to walk or drive back up here, walk through the facility and see some of the changes? Yeah, really excited. You know, I think um, we knew a lot of change was going to come when Pat and Ted and obviously with Paulo coming in as well. So we are excited for the changes. And then obviously to see them firsthand, it's really nice. It's himself with Leopoldo. Leopoldo, go ahead. Eh, mi estimado Edgar, ¿qué tal si me ayudas? Porque ahorita como que mi inglés anda un poco congelado. Sí, listo. Ok, le puedes preguntar a Tim que dentro de lo que es su fútbol, ¿qué es lo que más él le ha puesto atención antes de entrar a la pretemporada? From last year coming into this year, what would you say the one thing you want to work on, one of the things you did work on in the offseason that can I just be ready for for today? Yeah, uh, I think just getting fitter, getting stronger, um, stuff on the ball, uh, obviously you can always get better at. So just trying to improve my decision making in, in different aspects by watching games and watching things back. Listo, ok. Dentro de lo que es, Edgar, le preguntaba hace un momento al señor Ferreira, ¿Qué él piensa en cuanto él mismo transmitiendo esa comunión con la tribuna? Porque es uno de los jugadores que no veo que se conecta con la tribuna. ¿Habrá la posibilidad de que él como líder pueda tomar ese, esa posibilidad de conectarse más con la tribuna para que así se pueda de alguna manera mejorar lo que es la asistencia a los partidos? in terms of just the building that bridge to the fan base and uh, maybe having more vocal or just, uh, I guess, just being that uh, intermediary between you and the team and the fan base. Yeah, I'd, I'd say with the team, first and foremost, um, you know, I, I enjoy the role of being a leader. Um, I don't take it for granted at all. So um, the way the team maybe looks up to me or the way the coaches look at me as an extension is, is uh, I take a lot of pride in doing that. And in terms of connecting with the fans, you know, I think we're hoping that we're able to start on fresh foot here. You know, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of excitement about within within the locker room and within this, the facility about what we're going to do this year and how we're going to go about things. And I think there's going to be a big change, and I hope the fans can see that. Tiene algún plan de asistir a algunas escuelas, de participar con los clubes, o cuál sería en este momento esa imaginación o esos puntos imaginativos que le ayudarían para cumplir el propósito que le estoy presentando. Sí, Leo, estos programas los tenemos virtualmente ahorita por la pandemia, entonces por eso yo le puedo mandar más información al lado. Pero yo quisiera escucharlo de él, a ver qué plan tiene, si lo ha considerado, porque quiero, él es una parte importante, Edgar, y me gustaría ver si lo ha pensado o qué es lo que él tiene en mente. Have you seen the growth or just how the organization has navigated going virtual due to the pandemic? And as your as a leader, what's your role in kind of making sure that uh, the team is, is active uh, in terms of just being a presence in the community? Yeah, you know, I think obviously the last two years have been hard on everyone. So I think for us to connect with fans, it's it's really important. And we really enjoy that role in terms of connecting with fans and getting to meet people. Um, in the off season, I was able to meet with some season ticket holders. So that was really enjoyable for me to kind of connect with people that have been fans from the Houston Dynamo from day one. So uh, we're looking forward to more of that for sure. We're going to go with Jesus next. Jesus, go ahead. Hey, Tim. Welcome to another season. Um, my question to you is, you know, last year was your first season with, with the club. Entering this season, I mean, what's something besides obviously turning the, 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 the team around? What's something personally that you feel that you saw from last season that you're looking to improve on this season? Individually as a team? Uh, first you individually, and then of course as a team, but first you individually. Yeah, you know, I think um, last year was a tough year. You know, I think that, that, that might probably be the hardest year of my career in terms of 
ups and downs and highs and lows. So I think for me personally, um, getting back to what I'm good at, you know, I think um, being an old school defender, communicating a lot, demanding a lot of guys, being a leader, um, tackling hard, playing smart, um, all those kind of things I want to get back into the rhythm of. And then as a team, you know, I think, I mean, we got some exciting players to watch this year. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to everyone connecting, everyone like the locker room being really close, everyone connecting really well. And obviously that translates over to the field. Uh, my, my last question, I know it probably was super early to tell, but can you kind of gauge, you know, like a little bit of how uh, Paulo is going to be as a uh, head coach or is it still too soon to even tell? No, you know, I mean, Paulo's had very open communication. So, I mean, his door is going to be really open. He's going to ask questions of us. If he wants, we want to ask questions of him. So the open communication is obviously key, especially for guys like myself or like Zarek, who have been in this league a while that um, have seen a lot of things. And Paulo's even played in the league. So he knows, he knows how it goes when you have uh, some veterans that want to have a open communication with you. So um, that's, that's definitely a plus for us. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Thanks so much, Tim. Thank you. Up next, we'll go with Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Tim, can you uh, give us your thoughts about what it, you know, it means? What, what's the message for the new regime, new ownership, from GM, to bring up the player like Sebastian and the cost that goes with it? What's the message to you and, and perhaps to the organization's fans? Mark, that was a little hard to hear. Do you mind repeating that? Yeah, yeah. I said, uh, given the transaction that they bring in Sebastian, and the cost that goes with it, what is the message there from the new regime, the ownership, the GM, to make a, a move like this at this point? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think it's great. You know, I think obviously um, Sebastian, we're really happy to have him. Obviously, today is the first day with him. So, I mean, we're just happy that he's here. We're happy that he's getting touches on the ball. We're happy to have him. So, um, but yeah, from the, from the new regime, obviously, um, we're looking forward to it. You know, I think... Um, a lot of people have been asking about the Dynamo spending money, getting a nine, getting whatever players that they want. But for us, you know, as players in the locker room, it's we got to take care of what we can handle. So if the new regime obviously wants to spend money and get players, that's that's all great and stuff. As long as it um, continues to us being better as an organization, as better as a team. You have a follow up, Mark? We'll go to Alex next. Alex, go ahead. Tim, good morning. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, you're good. Great. Good to see you, sir. Uh, we were out there this morning, and in the past couple of weeks, we've talked to, to Coach, we've talked to Pat Onstead about a change in culture and, and, and that it's, it's, it's going to take time. What, what is your take on this change in culture from previous, I'm going to say, regimes to now uh, new ownership, new GM, a new coach? Yeah, you know, I think, like, like they said, the change in culture, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen, and, you know, you're not going to see it in the first preseason game in terms of that kind of a quick change, but it also comes from the players. You know, I think we get, we're understanding the message that they're uh, throwing down the ladder, so it comes to us as well to be held accountable and to hold other players accountable in terms of, look, this is kind of the standard that we want to set, and if you're not ready for that standard, then, you know, you're not going to play or you're going to hear about it. You know, so I think that the standard we want to set for ourselves is going to be high and it's going to be it's going to be a lot. It's going to be demanding on guys. And for us, it's it sh you should be enjoying that. You know, you should be enjoying playing at a high standard. And um, that's what we're looking forward to. Tim, um, teenage not being there yet. I know that a lot of us talk about your partnership and that being a, a, a solid foundation defensively. For, for the success of this team. I'm sure you want him here as soon as possible. Of course, you wish him at the national team level to have success, but but I, I'm sure you're thinking about how good you two can be together this year. Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously um, having T around is always great. You know, I think continuing to build our relationship on the field and off the field is going to be very important going into this year, especially getting a full season behind our belt. So as much as I am wishing him luck in AFCON, um, I can't wait for him to get back yet. Finally, quickly, uh, I know the defenders have to deal with goalkeepers, new goalkeeper coach with Zach coming in, lots of experience. I I'm sure there's a dynamic there, there's communication. I'm sure it's a relationship will what that will develop, not comparing previous coach, but I'm sure this is helping you and giving you energy with his experience and what he's helping the goalkeepers achieve this season. Yeah, yeah, and like you mentioned, like the goalkeepers, obviously there's, there's always different changes. There's always going to be 
Um, there's always going to be different ways to go about things. And, um, you know, playing with Steve today, you know, Steve, Steve's a chatterbox. You know, Steve doesn't really shut up out there. So it's good. You know, I enjoy that. You enjoy having having someone in your ear holding you accountable, but also keeping you keeping you on your toes. So um, obviously with Zach, as I get to know Zach more, I'm going to obviously enjoy that relationship. But, you know, Steve, uh, Steve and I were on the same team today. So I, I didn't I heard a lot of him today. Great. Tim, thank you, sir. And good luck this season. Thank you. Up next, we'll go with Victor. Go ahead, Victor. Hey, Tim. Um, happy uh, new start to the season. Okay. Obviously, a lot of talk of investment uh, with Sebastian today, but uh, you know, the MLS salary is public. A lot of uh, a lot of the spotlight on defense is on you guys, you and Teenage, um, one of the most expensive tandems in the league and, and center backs. Um, how much pressure does that put on you guys to to perform, uh, especially this year with the with the new uh, attempted change in culture? Yeah, I don't think it really makes a difference in terms of year by year. You know, I think the pressure to perform is always there. Um, I've been a part of really good back lines before in my career. So uh, I'm looking forward to obviously having that kind of a year again this year with Teenage. And then as far as the entire roster, you know, the feeling out there, uh, there's a lot of the same players uh, from last year. Uh, how much uh, feeling maybe of redemption is there to try to, um, you know, new coach, try to get different results this year? Yeah. Yeah. I think obviously the results is the first thing that we want to change. And then with the new coach, the new style, I think a lot of things are going to change and a lot of players are going to be used in, in ways that they can help benefit the team. So I think keeping a lot of the guys in the locker room is good because we had a good locker room last year and we're looking forward to that again this year. And then uh, it's going to be challenging. You know, there's a lot of good players in that locker room. So getting guys on the field is going to be, it's going to be a grind. So um, we're looking forward to having everyone work as hard as they can to get on that field. We've got Dynamo head coach Paolo Nagamura here. I'll kick things off. If you have any questions, go ahead and use the raise my hand option. Uh, start off, easy one. How was the first day? Very good. I mean, first day, uh, I think the guys set it on in the standard really high. And that's what, as a coach, that's what you, you expect from the players. Uh, of course, it's the first day. Uh, they're just coming back from a long, long off season. Um, but I think overall, it's a very, very good, productive day. Go ahead, Alex. Coach, good morning. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah. Great. Well, well, uh, um, uh, start obviously to a new season and, and, uh, and a big announcement of uh, Sebastian from Paraguay joining you. Initial reactions to this young man and how, how you see him fitting into your team this season, Coach? Absolutely. Uh, Seba is a player that we... We've been scout, scouting for a while. Um, a player that we 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 really wanted to bring to to Houston, and we're very very fortunate that we could get this this done. Uh, he's going to bring a lot of quality um, up front. Uh, hopefully, he can score a lot of goals for us. But very very excited uh, and very very optimistic about him uh, coming in and having a big impact in the team. Coach, when there's an announcement of a, of a designated player, of the most expensive player on, uh, in the history of the club, that carries some weight. And I guess uh, potentially it, it carries a responsibility. I'll use that word. Um, is he up to it? I know he's young. I know you're just meeting. But, but I'm sure that's the kind of reaction you expect from, 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 from media, from fans alike. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, he comes with a big responsibility. Uh, but I think he has enough experience under his belt, play for, for national team, played in Mexico. He's been playing Paraguay and been scoring goals consistently for, for Libertad. So uh, it's, just, uh, it's just about him adapting to the way that we want to play, adapting to the, to the, to the country and the new, the new culture. But I think he's going to be a big piece of the puzzle for us going forward. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Alex. Up next, we'll go with Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Paula, what does this say about ownership uh, to make a move like this and, and with, with the cost that goes with Mark, careful. Are you driving? I'm stationary right now. <laughs> okay. No, definitely. This this is definitely a, a, a sign of the things that have been said in the past, a commitment from the from the ownership group, commit, commitment from the from the from the leadership. And uh, it's it's definitely a, a a sign for, for things that 
is being talked and things that we hopefully will come to to Houston Dynamo. So uh, again, excited, ex excited for Seba, excited for 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 our team, for our fans, and and hopefully uh, hopefully we can keep going like that. Anything else for coach here in English? Go ahead, Jesus. Coach Jesus Acevedo Jr. here. My question to you is, um, how soon did you know that Sebastian was involved in talks with the Houston Dynamo and was seeing talks with Dynamo or maybe on the, I guess you can say, radar of the Houston Dynamo before you came on board? On, and, you know, were you told about Sebastian while you're having your talks uh, while you were negotiating to become coach of the Houston Dynamo, or did all this transpire after you became coach of the Dynamo? No, yeah, absolutely. Look, the my interview process was 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 a couple of days, so I knew I knew that um, they were looking for for new players to add it, and Sebastian was one of them. And of course, when when I accepted the the, the job and we we got into an agreement, I dig deeper on on the profiles of players that we were looking at and Seba was was one that stand out to me in a way that we want to approach the game so yes um, there was work that was done prior to me arriving but also there was definitely uh, an influence on my on the picks that I I wanted to have on the team so uh, and Seba was our top our top candidate for that position um, can you, the, the way the team is structured right now, can you kind of tell us what other maybe areas of, of help you think this, this team needs or, or a couple of positions that you feel like the team could still go out there and, you know, sign, trade for, you know, you know, what have you? Yeah, look, we, we, we still, you know, works to try to get a midfielder, um, maybe a winger, but it's, it's not fair for me to say which positions and uh, who are the guys or where we're looking. I just think that uh, we are in their works here. We are assessing the players into the preseason, but definitely we're going to be looking to add some quality players, uh, hopefully in the near future. Uh, uh, I don't think this is a one man one man show uh, with the signing of Sebastian. I think we 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 all know that pieces needs to be added. But are we going to have to do on the right time and, and, and in the right way? So, yes, we'll be looking for those players. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Up next, we'll go with Victor. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, I want to ask you about Darwin Quintero. He's, he's obviously one of the stories from, from the prior season. Um, how much of an impact player do you expect him to be uh, this year? Or what kind of role do you expect to see him? Uh, with the Houston Dynamo this year? Look, Darwin is a great player and I hope he has a great impact in the team and a big impact to the team. If if the players that we have in the, in the squad can keep pushing uh, each other, uh, it's only going to bring benefit to the team. So uh, the open competition is out there. The competition is there. It's a fresh start for everyone. Uh, it's about who's going to adapt to the way that we want to approach the game and uh, if 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 they can do that, I can see a lot of players contributed. Not only a Darren, but all the players that maybe didn't have much time uh, on the previous seasons. This may be a little bit early in the preseason, but have you decided on on who your captain will be for this season? Yeah, it's too early. It's too early. We we have an idea, but I think it would be wouldn't be fair uh, to to give a name right now. Um, but yes, we, we, we're still assessing the players and make sure that we, we, we make the right and correct uh, selection. Yeah. And then obviously a lot of these players were, were part of the roster last year. Maybe there's a feeling of redemption. Um, are you able to share maybe a little bit of what you spoke with them, uh, you know, maybe prior to training or in the locker room? Uh, obviously today being the first day of preseason. Yeah, look, today is the first day. Uh, and it was just about setting up expectations, setting up goals and, and make sure that players know what we're going to be asking uh, for them on the field, inside the facility, behaviors. So it was just more of a uh, setting up uh, what we would like for them to, to be changing or we would like them to be doing it. 
And you know, it's it's it's, it's a process. It's not we can't we can't not give all the information the first day. I think the information has to come in different times and bits, and and that's what we're gonna try to do. So we always uh, evolving as a team, but. As of, as of today, I think it was more of a setting expectations, setting how we wanted to work, how we would like to see, how we like to see on a daily basis, and and that's what we did today. Last one for me. Uh, obviously, Tim just spoke. Um, what are your expectations for him? Where do you rate him amongst you know his peers in, in Major League Soccer? And, and obviously, there's a big investment by the ownership in him and and teenage. Um, you know, where, where do you see the potential with those two guys? Yeah, look, uh, we could. We saw at the end of last year that uh, their partnership uh, was was a very interesting partnership. I think they they fit each other pretty well. But again, uh, it's like I said before, it's it's an open competition right now. We have Daniel who we brought it in, um, and no one has a no one no player on a, on a, on our roster right now has has a, a season ticket that they're going to be on the starting lineup i think the competition is on and and i think team uh, team and teenage has that experience of playing with each other last year what could help them but also uh, we have a lot of quality players in a roster that can uh, can fit in right away if we need to thank you coach best of luck this season thank you up next, we'll go with Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Afternoon. Um, my apologies if this has been addressed already, but what is the plan for Thor, your first round pick, or will it depend on on him? Look, it, it's it, you. You kind of re, uh, respond my my your own question. I think it's it comes to the player uh, as well. I think yes, we saw we saw a lot of potential on Thor, but at the end of the day, it's not only. Uh, coaching led I think the player has to to step up and 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 took some accountability and some some ownership on the work that is being is being doing on a daily basis uh he has opportunity now to be with us and we're gonna coach him up we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lead on a, on a right way and and it comes to the players well in, in performing training performing games that's how they had that's how they're gonna earn their playing on the field so it's 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 players led as well Hey, Pat, how are you? Good, Mark. How are you doing? Good to see you, man. Hey, can you tell me your, your thoughts about the message that is being sent with the, the significant signing of Sebastian and what that says about ownership, your new regime, and what you are, are trying to accomplish? Um, I, th I think it says – well, I don't think it says a lot in the sense uh, – what, what it says is that Ted's going to follow through as a man of his word and he's going to follow through with what he, he mentioned the first time he came here. So – uh, the nice thing is he's giving us the resources to make this team better and stronger, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Sorry, it's just a little weird. I'm trying to get my mask yeah. adjusted here. <laughs> Up next, we'll go with Alex. Go ahead, Alex. Pat, can you hear me first of all? Good yeah, morning. I can hear you great, Alex. How are you doing? Fine, sir. Great to see you. Uh, talk to a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit uh, to us, please, about Sebastian Ferreira from Paraguay. He's a young man. Why him? Why now? And, and what is his expected impact on the team? Uh, why him? I think uh, you, you go and you scout a lot of players, and you try to find players that you think are going to fit into certainly the style I believed uh, that this team wanted to become. Uh, something that I'd sold to ownership. Uh, fortunately, we found a coach that believed the same thing. And I think once Paulo came on board and, and he watched him, uh, he got excited right off the bat. And I think for, for both of us, uh, it's, a, it's a player that kind of suits the, the way we see the game and how a forward should act in our league and uh, a guy that we believe will be successful. Uh, Pat, the, the announcement this morning, the most expensive signing in the history of the club, designated player for a young man of 23 is he capable of handling the pressure the reality of it is now he's our designated player and he's going to be treated as such good or bad or ugly from fans the media and 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 other clubs yeah yes yes uh, I, you know there'll be some extra pressure on him but uh that's one of the things i liked about him um is that he embraces pressure uh he's used to it i i think you find in this game a lot of the nines and the forwards they actually want the pressure. They want the, they want the, the fans on them. They want the fans to expect a lot from them. And uh, Sebastian's uh, 
uh, no different than, than most of the top strikers around the world. So we're, we're excited to see him get on the field. We know he can score goals and we know uh, uh, he's going to put a great effort in for to lead our line up top and, and we're excited to see him play. And lastly, I guess following up on, on Mr. Berman's question, what does this say to the fans, Pat? What, what, what message are we sending that, that we are bringing players and possibly more to come? Question mark? There's no question mark. We, we're, we'll bring more. Uh, so now now is the time to get back to work. Uh, it's nice to get one over the line. We had a, a, a nice meal last night with, with seven his, his, uh, his agents. But uh, at this stage now, now it's focused, move forward and, and try to make this team better. So. Uh, we have the support from ownership to do that. Uh, and now it's up, it's up to myself and, and the rest of our group uh, to make sure that we make the right choices and bring the right players aboard. Great. Thank you, Pat. No problem, Alex. Up next, we'll go with Leo. Go ahead. My dear architect, blessings to you and your people that you love. Uh, Pat, uh, is it possible for you to share with us and how was the process to hire this, this new signing since the first step? You call someone, it was solely on you looking for candidates. Sure. I mean, I, I can kind of walk you through it. Uh, obviously, I did this in my previous life in uh, Columbus, uh, where I was looking at players and working closely with the scouting director up there. Um, this is a player that I'd kind of seen before and... and Thought would, thought would be a good fit for our, for a, a, our group here. Um, but at the, the end of the day, it's uh, it's taking time and to, to research players. He's not like he's a hidden gem. This is not a guy that we just found out of the blue. This is leading goal scorer in Paraguay. He's he's well known in South America as an up and coming young striker. So this is not, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we found him. But in the end, there are other teams in our league. I know that we're looking at him. We're interested uh, and then the big one is, is connection. So who do you know down there that can help you get the, the deal done? Uh, to give credit to Club Libertad, which is can be a difficult club at times to negotiate with. They were excellent, very open, uh, uh, very transparent on how they wanted this deal to go down and, and were held up their word, which I think sometimes doesn't always happen in these deals. When they set a price, they set the price and uh, they absolutely held it, held it up. And so... That made it very easy to deal with with both uh, the player and the club, uh, which is always nice in these deals. I, I don't know how you uh, create a reference on how the team performed behind the scenes last season, but uh, I didn't agree on the extension on the contract for Darwin Quintero, knowing that we didn't have a coach. So what was the, the reason that trigger or makes you sign Darwin or do whatever you did with, with Darwin, knowing that you were trying to hire a coach? Because you're making decisions based on, uh, there's lots of factors, you know, contract, there's times that come up in terms of uh, option. Uh, if you don't trigger options, then the player goes into free agency. Other teams could make an offer. Uh, lots of things are factored in the salary of a player, uh, a lot of things that you don't see uh, and that you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, be able to um, put your finger on. But but the locker room is is a big piece of what's going to have to change here and that the guys are committed uh, and guys that you want want to be in Houston and, and want to be a part of this this build and uh, the excitement here that we're, we have going forward. So uh, a lot of factors get get taken to these. And, and sometimes you have to make decisions before a coach is in place. It's the same reason we signed Steve Clark before we had a head coach in place, uh, Daniel Stairs. Uh, same reason why we let some players go uh, that we didn't feel um, uh, were fully bought in. And, uh, you know, Darwin Quintero is another guy, uh, guy that we signed before for coach came in here. So I'm sure they're, I'm sure the fans and, and yourself uh, showing, showing your fandom here in this case is that, uh, um, we're not going to please everybody, but in the end of the day, we're, every move we try to make is to make us better. And we want players that want to be here. And, and every player here that we just spoke about wants to be here and wants to make this club better. Well, going into the issue or whatever you call, you, you want to call the issue of the new culture or changing the culture. Uh, my opinion is that this problem with the culture is the bad decisions on hiring designated players. And uh, 
what, that's why I was asking you how much you did your homework on looking into different markets because we know the, the people that come from South America, uh, they have a value according to the quality and the best quality goes to Europe. And then you and Mexico fight for the next value on the players. So uh, do you take this consideration? Did you take this consideration and how the team failed on have designated designated player on the, in the past? Leo, I'm not sure what the question is there. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Can you ask me a direct question? Sure, sure. Uh, the issue with the culture. Can you hear me well there? Yeah, no, I can hear okay. you fine. Okay. I just okay. don't know okay. what you were asking. Okay. The issue of the culture for me also has an aspect beyond the performance of the players on the pitch. It's on the way the past administration handle the designated players, which they, according to myself, or my criteria, didn't perform well. My question to you, do you take this under consideration? But now you're telling about the new culture, knowing that part of the problems from the past culture was not having that uh, good perception or good eye on finding good designated players. Um, I, I don't think we, we build into what you particularly are thinking about our designated players. But what, what I would say is um, we don't want to focus on the past. Uh, we're trying to look on the future. Um, but I think what you're asking is uh, in, in the terms of culture, Yes, these players, uh, Sebastian, for example, is a guy that I met face to face. I flew down and, and had a had a lunch with him and made sure that he was bought in and the type of person he is and the type of style. Uh, we did a lot of homework. We asked a lot of people that have played with him. We've asked coaches that have coached with him. Um, so in terms of designated players for us, um, that's definitely something uh, we do a lot of work on. But at the same token, uh, you look at a Steve Clark, a Daniel Stairs. These are guys that we've We've called a lot of people to do a lot of background checks and make sure these guys uh, are leaders, guys that want to, again, I'll go back to wanting to be here and wanting to improve uh, the standing of this club and try to get us into the playoffs. I mean, that's our sole purpose this year is to become a playoff team. And I'm convinced that that's what we're going to do. Okay, but the last one, a very short one. So all what I want to be sure is that you or the club is not dealing with the same agent that manage different players. And this is not the case. No, oh, well, I don't. I don't believe there's anyone here on this team that uh, has this these agents that were that were with Sebastian. Um, and so far, I'm just trying to think of the guys. The, all the guys that I've signed or picked up have all had different agents. So I'm not sure what you're alluding to. Maybe in the past there was an agent that had had a, a relationship with the club. Um, but I would say in our world, in in our business, and I think it happens in a lot of businesses, whether it's uh, you know, the NHL, Major League Baseball, football, uh, basketball, there are agents at times that will get, get relationship with the clubs and, and they will push their players. So, um, but at this stage right now with the players, and I'm trying to think specifically, but I, I don't I don't believe there's, there may only be one or two players that have the same agent. That's, that's it. And out of a squad of 30, that's pretty good. Thank you, bud. No problem. Up next, we'll go with Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Afternoon, Pat. I was wondering what your expectations were for this draft class, and I guess Thor specifically. Um, or hoping he taunts uh, a goalkeeper like he did against UCLA again in MLS. I think that would be a lot of fun for everyone. Um, he's fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know if you got to see that video. It's a great video. If you haven't, it's it's fantastic. Um, it's funny because I don't I'm think gonna, the other team thought it was that. I don't. No, think the other no, club but and I'm great. sure I'm sure I get a call from UCLA saying, "What are you talking about?" But. Um, it's it's actually goes back to Leo's point, which is kind of funny because uh, we all have agents in this business, and I have an agent. My agent called me and said, uh, I, "I told our group that there's no way once I saw that video that I would ever sign that guy." And I said, "Well, that's exactly <laughs> back of my mind. I'm going. That's exactly why we're going to draft this kid." Um, so, in terms of our expectations on the kids, um, it, it becomes tougher and tougher, I think, for college kids to make that jump. Granted, we're the, it's a fourth pick, so I would put a, put a little more pressure on Thor and our expectations of him or that he can contribute with our group this year uh, at what level it's tough to say. I think we'll, we'll get a better feel for that probably in the next couple of weeks and see how he fits in and whether he can handle the level. The nice thing is, is he's actually played uh, in Iceland 
granted that's not MLS level, but, but he's been in a pro environment before. So that should help him with the transition, but it's a big jump from college to this one, to, to this level. Uh, but he does have a nose for goal and he has an ability to score goals. He's not a type of guy that's going to, you know, take a guy on outside the box and do a step over and, you know, run past a player. But what he is, is he has excellent movement in the box. Uh, and if we could do a good job of getting him service, he'll score goals. How many guys um, in the draft do you think roughly can make immediate impacts in, in, in the league? Is it one or two typically? Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you get up to three or four, but but real impacts, it's probably down to one or two nowadays. Um, but having said that, there's still, you know, Bright DK was uh, in the draft and, and has been very successful and he was drafted a little bit later. Uh, so it, it all depends. And what you're seeing now, too, is it sometimes takes them more than just a few weeks and months to get on the field, but maybe a year. A good example is a player that uh, uh, I had been a part of drafting in, in Columbus, Miguel Berry, that his first year and a half, he really didn't do much and then scored eight goals in the second half of the season last year. So sometimes it takes time for these guys to adapt uh, and get used. And, and part of it, too, is a coach believing in them. And sometimes that takes time as well. They have to earn the trust of the coach to get those minutes to, to be able to show what they can do. But it is, it's a difficult transition and it becomes more difficult each, each and every year. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Victor, you're up next. Hey Pat, um, just wanted to get some clarification on, um, you know, the most expensive transfer in, in, in the club history at, at, at the time of the uh, Kubo Torres transfer. Uh, you know, the report was out there. It was around a seven million, seven and a half uh, figure. Um, I don't expect you to divulge a figure here today, but I mean, just you know, maybe in, in terms of, of what or if that figure was incorrect at the time. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you in terms of uh, Kubo, and I'll, I'll be honest. For us, we tried to sign the player, and uh, we got it over the line, and then people were saying. I don't think it was transfer. I think they were saying the biggest. Uh, what was the terminology that we've been the biggest. Uh, um, acquisition, acquisition. And so I, uh, I'm assuming that probably includes his salary along with his transfer fee. Um, but I will say it's a, a significant outlay for, by Ted Siegel to, to be able to do this for us. And, and the fact that he's still, uh, there's still money there for us to be able to go, go find other players, I think will make a big, uh, a big difference for this club. I'll finish off with this one. You've, you've had, uh, you know, the first day of preseason as a player with this club uh, today as a general manager, uh, you know, what was it like for you? Uh, obviously you, you, you put out a picture, uh, you know, seven in the morning, but just what was it like for you, uh, you know, being back with the club on the first day of preseason? Uh, it's exciting. I was like, uh, it was, it was like a first day of training camp again, you were, you're excited. There's, uh, there's hope in the air and, and uh, uh, was also a beautiful day. So that was really nice to get outside, but, but I think for everybody here is, is, uh, there's a there's an opportunity here to to kind of write our own narrative and how this season goes and and our our plan and what what I told the group is that we're making the playoffs this year. Uh, this is something it's a, it's a big step. We have to have a big improvement without a doubt. But I believe we can do that. I believe we can bring in the players that can do that. I believe the players that are remaining that just, that uh, you know we brought back or chose to chose to stay. Uh, and wanted to be here are guys that can make a difference for this club. And uh, our, our sole purpose from here on out, day in, day out, is to qualify for the playoffs. And uh, at that stage, uh, it's anyone's game.